Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Physics Chapter Ten, Wave Intro, Video Two. Today's topic is motion of a simple pendulum. Objectives are: know what a simple pendulum is. Understand the length of the pendulum is the only factor that has an effect on the period of the pendulum's cycle of oscillation. Be able to determine the period of pendulum. Be able to explain how an experiment can be constructed to test which factors have an effect on oscillating pendulum. What's a simple pendulum? A simple pendulum <clears throat> consists of a bob, that means the mass attached to a string that has a negligible length. And this string cannot stretch either. So all the mass is on the bob. That's the mass. Pendulums moves in an arc, as you can see. Its velocity is the green arrow that is always tangent to this arc. Its acceleration is this blue arrow that has changing direction and a changing magnitude. This acceleration is always in the same direction as a net force. So, what is a net force? At one point, at any point, uh, there are two forces acting on the bob. Tension force and gravity. This two forces added together gives us the net force. So uh, let's see. Gravity is constant. Its magnitude is mg downward, but tension is always changing as the bob goes back and forth. And therefore, net force changes. The net force actually is the restoring force make this pendulum vibrating. The period is the time it takes the bob to complete one cycle. So in this case, it would be from this one extreme, go to the other extreme, then coming right back. That's the period. What factors affect the period of pendulum? So think about a pendulum. Pendulum basically have three things, right? The mass of the bob, the length of the string, the other one is angular displacement. So we can set up an experiment to test which of these three factors determine the pendulum's uh, period. To determine how the period depends on mass, we simply measure the period for different masses. Attach different mass as the bob at the end of the string while keep the amplitude and the length of the string constant. In this case, mass is the independent variable and the period is the dependent variable. As a matter of fact, we are going to um, do this lab. To determine how the period depends on amplitude, we can do the same thing. We just measured how the period uh, change with a different amplitude. Well, we have to keep the mass and the length constant. So in this case, amplitude is independent variable and the period is the dependent variable. Again, to determine how the period depends on length, we only change or we only measure the period for different length. Well, how do we measure the length? Length from the pivot, from the top of the string to the middle of the mass. That's the length of the pendulum. We'll keep both the mass and amplitude constant. So in this case, length is independent variable while period is a dependent variable. So once we finish this lab, we can conclude that for amplitude that is less than 15 degrees, the period of simple pendulum is independent of the mass and amplitude. Take a look at this is exaggerated animation. The amplitude is obviously big. The three pendulum has all different amplitude, has different angle, but they all have the same period. The period is only depends on the length. Length is the only factor affecting the period. So how is the period depends on the length? Period is directly proportional to the square root of the length. T equals to 2 pi times square root of L over G. As you can see, here are three different pendulums. The pendulum with the longest length, biggest L, have biggest period. The smallest length has the smallest period. So L is the length of the string, T is in seconds, and G is 9.81 meters per second squared. So that means T does depend on G, because if we talk about on Earth, T is only depends on the length. If we take this pendulum on the moon, then obviously the period is going to be affected by the value of G, because G is different. Let's take a look at this graph of period versus length and period versus square root of length. P 
Here it is related to square root of length, and this is square root relationship. So in this graph, period is in second. Remember, there's always a title. Title is vertical versus horizontal, dependent versus independent variable. This one uh, on the graph on the right says period versus square root of length. Let's see how they are related. T actually is directly proportional to the square root of length. So T period versus square root of length is a straight line. That's a direct relationship. In this direct relationship, the 2 pi divided by square root of g, this, the number in front of this, is the slope. Actually, we can do another experiment to determine if the value of g is 9.81. Let's take a look at this example. You need to know the height of a tower, but darkness obscures the ceiling. You know that the pendulum extending from the ceiling almost touched the floor and that its period is 12 seconds. How tall is a tower? So the, the height of a tower is the length of the pendulum. So we are given the period, we know g on earth, 9.81, we have to find l. We use pendulum equation, t equals to 2 pi l over g. We solve for l in this case, we do the square on both sides. So l equals to g times t squared divided by 4 pi squared. So you can figure out L is 36 meters. Another example, a pendulum is times, timed as it moves from its starting point A to several other positions as it swings. So here is the chart position and time. Use the data from the position time chart to determine the period of the pendulum. Well, period is from one extreme, go to the other side and coming back. So from A to E is 0.8 seconds, coming back another 0.8 seconds. So the period is 1.6 seconds. Calculate the frequency of the pendulum. Frequency is 1 over period, so it's 0 0.625 hertz. Use the period of the pendulum to calculate the length of the pendulum string. Well, we use pendulum equation, um, same as the last example. So pendulum the string is 0 0.64 meters. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.